Hi everybody, it's Grace. Welcome to Eating Peace this week. In my Eating Peace process, we talk a lot about um, conditioning and kind of feeling an identity that's related to powerlessness, feeling fear or emptiness. And when the mind considers that any of those things are happening, I am powerless. There's something threatening here. I am totally unsatisfied or bored. You know, there's a quick, kind of almost conditioned, it starts to get really fast, Velcroed idea to that experience to move to food. <laughs> Let's eat. That'll solve the problem. And just that center of um, solving problems, you know, that actually don't really serve us well. Let's call that the ego. I mean, ego has so many different words, kind of like the same as the word love or fear or any of these things I'm mentioning. They may have a little bit of a different definition for people, but most of us know that ego is some sort of self-centered and not necessarily to be trusted kind of energy in any given moment. It's not necessarily a thing, you know, like a entity or something actually happening. I mean, I love when people say that they want to get rid of their ego, like it's something inserted into their head somewhere. It's more of just an energy that's happening in the moment, it's been my experience. It brings you, there's sort of a plan in this thing that you need to get rid of. Same as a weight loss plan, right? All these different solutions that the mind will come up with for handling your eating problem. Okay, here's what's going to happen. It'll say, take out the notebook. You know, you're going to eliminate this kind of food and you're going to do this at a certain time of day and you're going to make sure that you practice XYZ and you're going to think in this certain particular way and if you don't do those, then you're messing around, you're screwing around, you must not really want to, to the program, you must not really want to get there, which by the way, that there is in the future. And it'll kind of drum up like a, as if it's the expert, you know, the expert doctor or, um, you know, highly degreed wise person that knows everything. There's these answers. I just find it amazing and um, not amazing because I've had the experience myself. Um, I still watch that mind attempting to solve a problem, but I feel amazed at working with people that so quickly move to, oh yeah, yeah, I know what I need to do. I know what I need to do. This, 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 here's the list. You know, I just need to stay in my program, right? And I'm gonna stop doing this thing and experience joy or freedom. The interesting and tricky part about this, it's not as if you, I mean, there's maybe a natural desire or joyful urge to, um, experience peace, to be at rest with a dynamic like eating, basic for survival, pleasurable. Just what we're talking about here is when something's happened and it becomes too much, you know, we consume and things move through our body and become, you know, one with our body and then it it's coming and going and all that's going on with eating, fascinating thing in itself to just simply look at like how crazy it is, but there's this thing that happens when it gets off balance, of course, which is what we're talking about. Something in the mind feels like an urge to eat when the body is not hungry, and the mind becomes the one that gets to rule the show, you know, that is more important. I mean, I can't re believe the energy behind the the intensity behind the binges that I used to have. It was like a furious, you know, Tasmanian devil spinning around, grabbing at the food. And some people experience it also as like sort of a graze eating, like totally unrest, um, you know, just constantly getting up and going and moving to the food and moving away from the food and moving to the food and just the sort of pain and torture of all that. Um, very difficult. All right, so we know what unbalanced eating is, but this planning, this planning on here's what I know I need to do in order to get to this other place later, even if it's in three hours, 
but it's not right now that the mind will come up with. So just looking at that alone, this thing that's going to happen, you know, what I'm planning on doing is not here right now. It's not in this moment here. It's very interesting. So there's this idea that I'm going to maybe lose weight or work on my compulsion, lose my compulsion, lose my desire. Let's kill the desire to eat altogether. <laughs> and that's sort of swinging into this completely opposite and also uncomfortable place. I mean, manifestation of that is like a rigid diet or an anorexic practically, you know, it just incredible lack of trust and not really um, a space of just um, simply simple surrender and ease with what is with this eating that happens and doesn't happen. So there's kind of a how do we how do we sit with being at ease with the present? I love how Sherry Huber said once um, or in her writing says, you know, this is not about a weight loss program. It's about a self gain program. But we're talking about which self, not necessarily that ego planner that seems to have all the solutions and likes to give you your prescription. You know, here's what you need to do. It's more the self that is present here right now, or that's really all the self that is here now. Because that self is here right now. It's just a sense of the I am that's present. All is well. The deep breath. Even if something isn't all well, even if it's not all well, I am still in existence. I am still here. I am still perceiving what is. I'm in my surroundings. And I maybe even just take the perfect, you know, right action. I am respond, I, the body is hungry, and so I get some food. And I enjoy it. The body is not hungry, so I know it's not time to eat. So instead of having this plan for, you know, what I'm going to do so that I finally get to this place later where I'm not happy, an incredible exercise is to practice feeling the experience of safety, power, satisfaction here, now. And oddly, the paradox of that may be that something, something, some sort of transition is happening in your life or um, something really profound and huge has occurred that has brought out tremendous amount of grief or heartbreak. I find this desire to access peace in this moment and it feels like it's not happening. Yeah, compulsive, compulsive, compulsive thought. This desire to access peace in the moment often has a given that there is not peace here, number one, and number two, that um, it shouldn't feel sad or upsetting or bring tears or bring heartache or have an experience of rage even. <laughs> like, I don't know, there's sort of a place where let the fountain of all that be. And it doesn't mean we have to eat about those things. In um, a webinar that I've done that where I talk about seven different stressful beliefs that we all seem to have from time to time, maybe all at once, <laughs> that keep people from calming down and keep the cycle of compulsion going. The very first one is, this is an emergency. This is urgent. And you know that feeling of urgent, urgent. There's not enough of something, not enough time, not enough calm not enough um, relaxation, uh, too much fear and anger and the panic around that and the thought 
because this is happening and there's not enough of something and too much of something else, I need to eat. It's the same kind of planning. It's kind of a panic urgent planning and it's not the one that gave you the prescription, you know, that ego part of the mind that's saying, here's what you need to do to be happy later. But it's still like panicking and swinging to the other side of the pendulum. Oh my God, I throw out that whole um, prescription that I thought was a good idea, smash that to bits, I'm swinging to the other side because um, I'm panicking and I'll eat, eat, eat. At least that used to be my experience with kind of the way of it and reality and the way I was eating was it was either kind of all or nothing. But the same really is the view towards life and what's happening in that moment. Everything about kind of trying to hold it together and be stable and not be too scared and not feel like I'm a victim, except for I did, and not feel too much loss, you know, definitely fear, keep the fear away. I'm just not wanting to worry about risking or you know, stay in a safety zone. All these things, many things can be said about any part of this, any part of this and our experience of the moment. But here's what I want to offer today. It's kind of overwhelming with all these thoughts, you know, about the future and the past and how it's gone so far is even with the mind running and showing you images and bringing up solutions and having its thoughts and ideas and opinions about food and eating, what if you just sat here for a moment and didn't know anything? I do not know. Byron Katie calls this the don't know mind that we often get to or access. Get to even sounds like we're moving there, but it's suddenly with inquiry, you can experience that in the present moment. Is what I'm thinking absolutely true? Anything that's disturbing or stressful or what I think might happen or that later on I'm going to feel better if I work on myself about this whole compulsive thing. Even if I have those thoughts, who would I be without them right now, today? In this moment, who would I be without the thought? I have to do something, follow a plan, eliminate a certain type of food, follow a program. Who would I be without the thought that I have to know exactly what to do and I have to do it and I have to follow my ego's program for what it is just sure is right or wrong for me. And I've tried that, I, you know, even suggestions that come along that sound really good. Oh, I've tried that, people will say. But who would I be without the thought that I know? I know the right way. I know where this is going. What if I just didn't know in this moment and waited? I love also from Sherry Huber that she will mention as far as meditation and the Zen practice that um, if you feel bored or unsatisfied, well, meditate an extra two minutes in that boredom. And if you still feel bored and unsatisfied, do nothing for another two. <laughs> I mean, as you wait and sit with this moment that you're calling boring, frightening, very scary if you feel powerless, victim, as you sit with that moment, you know, who would you be without your thoughts about that moment, without your story? It might be that things become very fascinating in this internal world, very fascinating with the don't know mind, rather exciting with what's available to you in the moment and no need to protect or make plans or get ready for something or even wait until later to be peaceful. I know it doesn't feel peaceful. I certainly have had that, that sense when you're sitting in meditation or silence, you're quiet, and the mind is just going bonkers, right? <laughs> not exactly peaceful, except you could question that. I'm not peaceful. Is that true? The self, the self we're talking about, 
self-gain program and that kind of self, the internal existence, the life force that's running through you. Maybe the mind is part of it, but the mind is not it. That's just part of an energy. It's like this brain is doing what it does. It's, you know, making it, being a little, having its projects in there, solving problems. But growing that self by just being still, practicing a sense of rest, even in the middle of disruption in the mind or feelings in your body, whatever feelings are going on. What I'll end with today is just sharing this thought. You know, you think sometimes if I sit still, and I have this unease, anxiety, cravings to eat, you know, whatever that don't seem peaceful, whatever that doesn't seem peaceful, uncomfortable feelings, really upset with what somebody said to me once, maybe even in my childhood, how they were. So I have all that going on. But who would I be without that being the full story? It doesn't mean you're pretending none of that ever happened or in denial or pushing that away or thinking, I better change my thoughts about all that. It just means, like, what else is here? Who would I be? What else is here without those thoughts, without that story being the only thing on my screen? You know, if I look around and see what else is happening, what else is possible, what else I'm aware of in this moment, in this present moment, in this present moment, who would I be without my story being true? I notice my story is never actually true <laughs> now. Kind of amazing. Turn the thought around. What I'm thinking is not true. I am safe. I am okay. Even if I have big feelings or some kind of disruption happening or the mind thinks it's got all its solutions, what if I even could catch this element of what I think is going to happen later when I have weight loss or when I have my eating under control, you know, in the future? What if I just could access the possibility of that right now, that all is well right now, even my body and the weight and what's been going on, you know, for me, all that's happened so far, just sitting now, feeling the self-acceptance of what is is okay. It has even served me to today, to this moment. Even my weight is okay. Even my eating and all it's ever been has been okay. It's served its purpose. I can sit here now and feel, find examples of how I am safe, I'm alive, I could even find comfort as I sit still on a couch, <laughs> in a meditation chair, in this moment, in the presence of food or not. And who would you be without your story? All right. Accessing that self. I don't know if it's a small or a capital S or a small S, but being in touch with just the life force with you and paying attention to that. Not so much that mind that has all the answers to what you need to do and all the direction and the dictation and the advice. Who would you be without any advice needed in this moment? Take care, everybody. Let me know how it goes.